offended if you are angry. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. When you are moving in anger and moving in this, in, in just aimlessly hitting at people, getting back at people, one of our innate emotions as humans is to get back at somebody, it's to get revenge. Um, all right, so I just noticed that my video got cut short, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this out there. Basically, um, what do I want y'all to know that I couldn't talk about until now? A couple things. First thing is I'm very proud of myself that kind of gave myself a gag order, but the gag has been lifted partially. Um... So everybody is asking the number one question. How did it seem like you had such a beautiful marriage with Samantha and then all of a sudden we're on the internet and both of y'all are releasing a statement that y'all are both getting a divorce? Well, although I agreed and we wrote the statement together, um, the entire time, including right now, I can literally sit here and tell y'all, I have no idea why this woman left me. Um, um, I have no idea. And so what I have found in this painful experience where I've slipped in and out of depression, um, there is no pills or medicine, no hospital visit, there is no therapy session that I have been in that I've been able to remove the vile evil disrespectful intentions in and around the way it all went down um, you know this new concept that really pisses me off about you know sick masculinity um, first of all I don't think the word Toxic even belongs in front of a man, but we'll talk about it later. Um, but there is a concept of toxic femininity, and toxic femininity, to me, it seems like it's real generational. You know, Samantha's mother has been married and divorced four times. Okay, this is her fourth husband. So there's a lot of entertainers. And you've heard about people that are controlling. They want to take you away from your family, all of your friends, everything about your world and your life and your every existence. They want to take you away from it all because it's their way of saying, here's my celebrity, here's my money, here's my influence. And they want to figure out a way to lock you down and isolate you so that they can control your life. That's not who I am. Um... I may not be close to my family. I've never been close to my family. But when I've been in relationships with women that are in love with their mom and their fathers and they got brothers and sisters and nieces and nephews, I have been the complete champion for women that have friends. Not ratchet, hood rat, you know, and, and everything and everybody moving, NBA, NFL, and all my rappers and singer homies. We're not talking about those your friends, all good, keep your friends. You know, you gotta kinda minimize how often your girl that you love or you in love would connect with those types because their dialogue ain't right. Everything about what they doing and how they moving ain't right. And you wanna be able to say, you know, I got a girl, rather you're engaged, rather you dating, or rather you're married. You wanna be able to say, you know, when you go to dinner, with your mom and your family, your loved ones. It doesn't concern me about going from eating dinner with your mama and then all of a sudden you at a club with 10 of your homegirls and y'all end up getting drunk and having sex with a bunch of NBA players by midnight. You know, you don't really want to have those type of uh, girlfriends around when you're in something for real. And the same thing happens on the other side, you know. If you are a man's man, you're in a relationship that has some type of decency about it, um, you don't really want to 
uh, let your man be around too many single dudes having single conversations. As soon as you want to vent and unload and talk about your marriage and certain challenges that come with your marriage, the first thing they're going to try and do is encourage you to leave your wife or to leave your husband. So Samantha's mama, her name is Patricia Randolph, divorced four times. I would say, baby, go to your mama house for two, three weeks at a time. You know, take the baby, go have fun, go live your life. We've been traveling. We've been over here, over there. You know, go spend some time with your family because you was with your mama every day, every other day. Y'all work out together. Y'all go to church together. And I know us getting married compromised the day-to-day -day communication and interacting interaction that she used to have with your mama. I don't have that type of relationship with my mama where I see her every week, talk to her every day. But I know a lot of men and women are really close to their mother, rather they're grown, very married, adults, multiple kids. Everybody has a different dynamic. I don't judge you. I don't stop you from having a relationship with your family and your mother because I didn't have one with mine. Y'all see what I'm getting at? So blindly, I'm saying, go on over there. And whatever arguments or issues we was having, her mama got in her head and it's expected of someone who's been divorced four times to be having these negative, toxic, dysfunctional conversations and trying to poison the magic and the dynamic of the sanctuary of our marriage. Some of y'all call them in-laws. I have never experienced anything like it in my life. Now, I am not blaming this woman because it takes two to tango. Your mama, your daddy, your whoever could be all in your ear talking shit about your husband every day. And it takes you to listen to it. It takes you to believe it. And it also takes you to see this, see things through the lens that your mama wants you to see things through. You see what I'm saying? When you're an adult, you're going to listen to a lot of people. Why are you with him? Why he ain't never home? Girl, He been, I would never let nobody treat me and talk to me like that. Everybody got some shit to say about your marriage and your relationship, but they would take your man in a minute. They would take your man in a hop, skibbity, jumpity minute. They talking shit about your life, but they actually want your life. So, fast forward. I'm in New Jersey working on a film. The movie was called Rogue Hostage. It's all over Netflix. It's all over everywhere. Independent movie. I was out there working on the film probably three and a half weeks, me and John Malkovich. Now, why did Samantha leave you? First of all, I don't know. Second of all, everybody who knows Sam don't understand Sam. And I definitely don't understand her. And I was married to her. So I'm in New Jersey. I'm working on this film. I literally was in Atlanta for a total of seven weeks. I got there at 6 a.m. on Father's Day. Y'all remember all the date nights? Remember that, Brother Mark? Date nights. We had uh, we had Jonathan McReynolds made my wife cry. The gospel singer, I surprised her. Never even heard about Jonathan. She played her music every day during the pandemic. I reached out to Jonathan McReynolds and I said, man, everybody is fighting and arguing and all this dysfunctional. A lot of abuse, a lot of verbal abuse, a lot of physical abuse. Everybody was like, now that I got to be around your ass 24 hours, seven days a week. A lot of relationships during the pandemic because a lot of us, without even knowing, when we leave the house every day and we go to the job, we pick up the kids, we at work, we allow our relationships an opportunity to hit the reset button. You know, you miss your girl, you miss your husband. You like, oh man, I can't wait to get home to my wife. Long day at work, blah, blah, blah. But during quarantine, 
when you're talking about 24 hours, seven days a week, you, that could be the worst shit ever, or it can be the best shit ever. And in the case of me and Samantha, it actually ended up being the best thing ever because I am so busy, I'm always traveling, I'm always moving. There was no flights, there was no concerts, there was no movies, there was no conference calls, there was no meetings. I, like the rest of the world, I was stuck at home 24 hours, seven days a week. Your routine looked a little different than mine. I don't want nobody to cry me a river. Chef, butlers on deck, nannies. We had assistants. We had everything we could ever need. We was not hurting for money. We was not hurting for space. You know, some people went crazy because they was in a small space stuck at home and could not leave um uh, yeah so 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 basically after 10 months you know we dealt with kobe bryant dying i was in la you know i lived in the valley i don't live in la no more but lived in the valley kobe bryant you know he passed on with his daughter and all the other angels on that helicopter Man, it felt like that was only 10 minutes from my house. That was the first thing that hit us in LA. Then some random shit called shit. They talking about you can spread the shit from breathing it in. Everybody was freaking the out, didn't know what it was. Fast forward, we stuck at home. We're scared like everybody else, but we couldn't have been more blessed while being in What is the point in telling this story? Right before Y'all remember the crying video? Y'all remember all the baby mama drama and accusations from my ex? That shit rocked my marriage. The vibrations that me and Samantha had, we were up there with the Care Bears in the clouds. The accusations from my ex rocked my marriage and changed the energy and the dynamic in and around my marriage. So once quarantine hit, I said, look at God shutting the world down and giving us an opportunity as a married couple and a family to hit the reset button. I leave LA on a red eye the night before Father's Day. I get to Atlanta, 6 a.m. Father's Day. These are facts. Happy Father's Day balloons are all there. Shit is beautiful. I'm fresh off of date night every Friday night. We had Tamia, Eric Benet as a surprise. Yeah. We had everything we can ever imagine. If you're going to be in team, you might want your team to look the way ours did. Which means I never had time to pour into my wife the way I did. I never had that moment to just stop, get away from the rat race, the hustle chasing everything, turning over every rock. After all that toxic energy that came from my ex, I finally had an opportunity to pause, sit still, look my wife in her eyes, make love, date night, flirting, energy, resetting the energy in and around our marriage after all that toxic shit. Waking up to lies, all this shit all over the internet that would not go away. Financially, I was in a tight spot after all those controversies. I had just did fast eight, maybe nine, I think. So I was okay. I get to Atlanta, Father's Day, 6 a.m. I shot two music videos. Why did Samantha leave me? Samantha left me because I shot two music videos in a row. Look them up. One of them is called Legendary, Dedicated to George Floyd, Eric Garner, Trayvon Martin, and Breonna Taylor. I had my attorney, Benjamin Crump, in the video. It was called Legendary, featuring CeeLo Green, directed by Dion Taylor. We did all the casting, location scouting. We did everything we wanted to do, and I did it all at home. After we did the Legendary video, we shot the second video called Black Excellence, featuring Rick Ross. 
Samantha was my leading lady in the video. Editing, recording, color correction, telecine, everything that it has to do with casting, location. We're shooting two music videos at the height of a This woman looks at me in the kitchen. After 10 months of uninterrupted love, magic, and pouring into my wife. And she said to me, babe, babe, babe. I said, what's going on? Keep in mind, I got people sleeping in every room in my house. We're working around the clock. I am in creative heaven. No fighting, no arguing, no drama, no dysfunction. I just gave you 10 months of my life uninterrupted. I'm finally shooting two music videos in Atlanta. I'm editing, creating, and working around the clock. She looks at me and she says, are you not attracted to me anymore? Those exact words. I said, Sam, what are you talking about? She said, are you not attracted to me anymore? I said, I'm working. You know, you married a recording artist and I'm recording. That's like marrying Denzel Washington and then divorcing him when he gets in character for a movie. You know exactly who I am. You know exactly what I do. You know exactly why we live the life and the lifestyle that we live. So when it's time for me to work, make me understand why are you looking at my focus and my work and looking at this as a negative or looking at this as if I don't love you anymore because I am in my zone creating. You don't leave LeBron James or Kobe Bryant because he's waking up at 6 a.m. in the morning to go to the gym and practice and work out and train and he's fully focused on his career. I play basketball. I have to work out. I have to do whatever it takes to mentally, emotionally, physically, psychologically get in my zone. I just gave you 10 months of my life uninterrupted. How are you making the connection that I'm not attracted to you anymore because I'm working on two music videos. And the videos that I was making was literally on behalf of the culture. George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Eric Garner, Trayvon Martin. Look up the video, it's called Legendary. You don't leave your husband for that. The Black Excellence video featuring Rick Ross has Samantha as my leading lady because I wasn't even willing to put another woman in that spot. You were in the video with me. So I leave after wall to wall, hustle, grind, focus, creatively on the high of all highs. I was in heaven and I did everything at home. I wasn't even on another location. The second music video for Black Excellence was shot literally at my house. I leave town after seven weeks to go shoot a film called Rogue Hostage. She decided to file for divorce. I never cheated. Never went on a secret date. I know some dudes who had multiple kids behind their wives back. Never had sex. Never did anything sexually. Never did a lunch, a dinner. Never flirted. No DMs, no text messages. Completely faithful. And I want to believe I got more access to women than most of the dudes I know. Five straight years, completely faithful. The story of my life is I'm divorced. And the only woman I've ever kissed in five years was Naomi Harris in the movie Black and Blue. And I kissed her on her forehead. Didn't even kiss her on the lips. Got a beautiful child. This woman just woke up one day and decided this marriage ain't for me. And where I've lost all my sleep over all these years, and she hasn't even told me to this day why. As I pull out my calculator, and everybody pull out their calculator, trying to add it all up. In the Bible it says, leave and cleave. Anything that's negative, dysfunctional, that's trying to pull you away from your marriage and your family setting. In the Bible, it says, leave and cleave. 
And it's very clear to me that her mother never wanted her to leave or cleave to her husband or her family. She still got her husband, but she was able to manipulate you out of your husband. And you, your dumb ass let her do it. So fast forward. File for divorce. Prenuptial agreement as detailed as it gets. We covered everything. I've never been in a relationship with a woman in my life who has went above and beyond to sell me and oversell me. I don't want your money. I don't care about your celebrity, your status. I don't care about shoes, purses, handbags. I mean, I met this girl in a $17 sundress. This woman convinced me. I don't care about your money. I'm not clout chasing. I don't care about social media. I don't care about nothing that's got to do with nothing. As a matter of fact, this is the funniest shit. I won't throw you under the bus on this level, but I will say this. Every time we left a dinner, or any time anybody came to our house, and their woman, their wife, red bottoms, Hermes bags, Louis Vuitton, diamonds, watches, nice hair, makeup, whatever cosmetic work they may have done. I mean, this woman used to rip women to pieces talking shit about women and their choices of shoes, clothes, diamonds, nice things, because she, in her mind, was so against it. You make $160,000 a year right now as a licensed clinical social worker. I make what I make. You left me when my daughter was one years old. The prenuptial agreement was so extensive because it's everything that you sold me on. I don't care about your house, your money, who you are, materialistic things. You left me unexpectedly. You took our daughter. You left while I was out of town filming a movie. You've already lied on 15 different court documents under penalty of perjury. You left me unexpectedly. You told the whole world and f***ed my name up that I kicked you out of the house when I was actually out of town filming the movie. You told people that I changed the locks and put you and a one-year-old innocent child and chucked you to the streets. Me and you and our marriage had barely survived the lies from my ex. So you leave me to accuse me of some shit because you know that TMZ would report it. And you felt like if you can just make up some shit to make me look bad and look crazy, like I really threw you out of the house. She walked through 50 boxes because you packed up all of your shit on your own to leave me while I was in New Jersey filming a movie. You took my daughter from me. You took all of your shit out of the house and the dichotomy and the audacity to arrange a marital therapy session for another married couple that was going through something and when she stepped out of the therapy session she walked through 50 boxes because you were leaving your husband you put some lies and some vile disrespectful shit all over social media you doing these miracle mondays out here throwing jesus christ's name everywhere there is no miracles happening on Monday. You left your husband. You left your family. You lied under penalty of perjury on court documents. And the reason why we got a problem with this judge is because every time we try to present anything that has to do with proof and evidence that you've lied at least 15 times under penalty of perjury, he wouldn't let me or my attorney get a word out. Soraya wants for nothing. My daughter wants for nothing. I'm going to tell y'all right now. I've been quiet. That's 5%. I won't be quiet for much longer. And we're going to figure it all out. But we're not going to be running around handing out fake miracles on Monday. 
And we're not going to keep running around trying to convince the world that I kicked you and a one-year-old innocent baby out when I was physically out of town working on a movie. You're a liar. You're vile. You're wrong. You're disrespectful. And I know you're beautiful, but I'm not here to keep playing games. And I've been quiet this whole time. I'm at 5%. I got 95 left. Y'all stay tuned.